So just a quick recap. We, we have shown all the some of the complexity behind uh, the preliminary step for indexing, namely uh, tokenization, uh, the application of the stop words, uh, limitation, uh, stemming, uh, and so on and so forth. Um, and we have also seen uh, <coughs> how a standard library, Python library, NLTK, allows you to experiment with all those uh, uh, modules in order to build your system. And actually, we did a very simple and basic um, indexing system, right? Um, now, let's go back to the, now that we have uh, terms, and now that we know how to build from terms, posting lists, I recall you the main idea is to uh, apply Boolean queries to this system, which allow us to uh, answer to queries like uh, A and B, A or B, A and not B, and so on and so forth. Um, and the basic uh, idea here is that uh, since, what, what is the main ingredient of the posting list in order to make it work? Good, excellent. So since the posting list uh, is sorted, uh, then uh, we'll take uh, only all the m plus n if m is one of the posting lists and n is the other posting list. Uh, simply because I start, one, two, I move, two, two, taken, three, eight, eight, taken, and so on and so forth. Okay, so basically just uh, walking through both uh, the uh, posting lists, uh, we can do uh, the basic operation. Now, why is odd of m plus n? Because we move step by step. Let's see whether you have uh, an intuition. Can I improve this system? Can I improve the efficiency of the, those query? Uh, let's see the following. Here I have a big gap, right? From 8, I go to number 41. 8, 8, I take it, but then I move 1, 11, 17, 21, 31. What can I do? Skip the Right. If I allow some skipping, to what? To any number which is below or equal to 41. It should work, right? Does it make sense to everybody? OK. This is indeed the, the, the main idea. <coughs> and uh, if the index is not changing too fast, why is it not changing too fast? Because otherwise, we have to recalculate every time those jumps. What we can do, we can introduce jumps into the posting list. So this is an example. Um, okay, how would it work? It works the following way. Up to eight, uh, everything as before. We cannot use the jumping list. What we can do now is that uh, since from here, I can go to number 31, that is, by the way, less or equal than 41, which is the number in the first list, I can do the jump. Because anyway, everything between 11 and 31 will be less than 41, which is the other number that I have to compare in order to take the hand in the Boolean query. OK? So if I properly place those jumpings into the posting list, I can possibly improve significantly the performance of the merging. Sorry. <coughs> A of the merging, OK? Good. So how is now clear? Uh, what is important to understand is where do we have to place those um, skip pointers, OK? OK, this is an explanation of, uh, of what we saw before, 
assuming that we are stepped through number to the to the um, posting number eight, uh, and then we can do the skip to number thirty-one and proceed from there. But now we have at least two alternatives, right? To have very often jumps, so a lot of jumps, of very few jumps, skips. Okay, the idea is that there is a kind of trade-off. If I have a lot of skips, uh, I can possibly use the skips more often, but the problem is that uh, the advantage is uh, relatively smaller, right? Because you can observe here. In this particular case that I have a skips of two, I can possibly take advantage only of the fact that I do not explore this specific posting. While if I take this la long uh, skip, maybe it will not be applicable, because maybe I cannot skip. But if I do it, I'll take advantage for all those postings. So uh, more skips means that you have a shorter skip spawn. And so it's more likely to skip because clearly you have a, a more granularity. Uh, but the advantages uh, are uh, less evident and you have a number, a lot of comparison that you have to, to make. In the other case, fewer skips, you have clearly few uh, pointer comparison. In this particular example, only here and there. Uh, but clearly you have a few successful skips, okay? Good. So what is a kind of uh, heuristic? Uh, there is a simple heuristic uh, actually that has been proposed in 1996, so quite a long time ago, um, which is uh, if you have a posting list of length L, square root of L is a good uh, way of uh, placing, uh, uh, passing, uh, uh, skipping, evenly spaced, okay? Now, this is good. Uh, I mean, it works to some extent. Uh, the fact is that it completely ignores the distribution of query terms. So you do not take into consideration that some terms are actually uh, more popular than others. Uh, and it's, uh, it works pretty well if uh, the index is uh, relatively static, so while, uh, static while um, it's pretty difficult to maintain if the index uh, keeps changing. Why? Because you have to update all your uh, skipping, okay? all your skips. Good. Okay, in general, this is a kind of sentence that you have to keep in mind and to some extent summarize what we said uh, before. Okay. Traditionally, CPU was low and so highly compressed techniques uh, were not uh, optimal. Why? Because if you have highly compressed technique, it means that you have to do a lot of uh, processing in order to figure out uh, what actually is what you are looking for. Okay. So, Comparing a lot of uh, pointers uh, is something that requires uh, some CPU effort. Now, CPU are fast and disk uh, is low. Um, so reducing the process is lean, is, is least, uh, size uh, dominates. Okay, this completely changes if you are running something that works in memory. Okay, so if instead of going into the hard disk for looking through your data, you can access the memory because clearly, as you know from the cache uh, hierarchies, you know that you have CPU and then you have memory and then you have disks. So depending on where is your index, everything will change. Now, <coughs> despite the fact that memory is much affordable than before, still, putting all the indexes of a significant information retrieval system in memory is almost impossible. So anyway, you have to 
find out the proper trade-off. Okay, but jumping skips in the processing list is one technique which allows you to improve the performance beyond uh, the linear time. Okay. Good. Now, just to recap what we said up to now, hmm? for in points. We have a distinction between uh, <coughs> type and token. What is a token? We saw before, I take the collection of documents, I apply tokenization in order to, to have a unit uh, of text, which actually depends on the semantic of your uh, search engine. What is a term? Is this token after that I apply all the steps uh, we saw before? Steps related to the language, uh, steps related to the context, uh, um, st stemming, uh, stop words, uh, and so on and so forth. Okay? And what is the uh, element that I use for indexing uh, my inverted index are the terms, okay? So what are the tokenization problems? The tokenization problems is basically the following. You have a number of cases that you have to consider. One example is the hyphenization we saw before. Hewlett Packard, is it Hewlett Packard the token or Hewlett and Packard? Or San Francisco, is this San Francisco together or San and Francisco? What you can do is you can use equivalence classes in order to group together terms that have the same, uh, uh, the same uh, meaning in the context of information retrieval. And as we saw, you have a number of uh, options. You can deal with uh, numbers, with case folding. I remind you, the case folding is the idea with Windows. If you have the W, capital W, it means that most likely you are talking about the operating system. If you have the small w, it, is, it means that most likely you are talking about uh, the window uh, as a furniture. Uh, if you have a windows with the s at the end, it could be both of them, either the plural of the windows in your house or the operating system. Okay? And then you have uh, stemming and lemmatization. So basically you reduce again your token to their uh, minimal, uh, say, uh, root, okay? Finally, we saw the skip pointers, a technique which allows us to improve the performance in searching, or better, in answering to Boolean queries, simply because we can skip a significant portion of the posting list due to the skip pointers. Okay, um, from the first uh, class, we remind uh, B word indexes for the phrase. B words means that uh, when we are looking, instead of Boolean queries, we are looking for, looking for phrase queries. It's could be a, it could be a good idea to, um, to use as terms B words, two words. Can you give uh, me an example when it it's uh, definitely a good idea to use B words. As an example, the name and surname of a very important person, which is likely searched a number of times, so it's a good idea to have directly a B word as a unique uh, term uh, in your index. The example was Michael Jackson. Okay? It works, but in general, it, it could be less effective they use positional indexes. In positional indexes, basically, you are adding uh, to your, uh, your uh, posting list uh, also the position of the term, which is the index of these postings, inside the given document. And so you remember maybe the to be or not to be, in order to see to be, we were looking before for to, then for be, and the only thing is that the positioning list, the positioning was one after the other, in order to find out to be, okay? 
So if everything in this slide is clear, good job. You are uh, in a good position, I would say. Okay, questions? Okay, let's go further. Now, what are we doing? What, what would, would we do in the next hour? So the first idea is uh, what kind of data structure should we use in order to implement our inverted index? Okay. Um, we saw in the uh, simple example in Python that as an example, a good data structure could be a dictionary. Indeed it is. But uh, what kind of alternatives, alternatives do we have? And then we have to uh, discuss at least uh, what is named tolerant retrieval. What is tolerant retrieval? Instead of an exact matching between the uh, terms uh, of the query and uh, what is inside the documents, we want to use wildcard, uh, the famous uh, star, asterisk, uh, in order to find out uh, all the terms uh, that uh, starts or ends with a given suffix or prefix. And then we can deal with the spelling correction and soundex, which is a bit, uh, uh, I would say, uh, to some extent at, at the frontier of this uh, um, wall lecture, but we have to discuss at least. OK. This is our inverted index. Basically, we have a collection of terms named dictionary. Each of these terms will point to a postings, a list of postings. Okay. What is the data structure? We already say that, look, this stuff must be dynamic, both in terms of uh, postings, because uh, it could be relatively easy to add the new documents into your collection and you have to index uh, these documents. Uh, but I would say also the dictionary should be relatively dynamic, right? Because you, whenever you add a new document, maybe you add new terms that must be added into the dictionary. Okay, the first most uh, natural uh, solution, I would say, uh, is uh, an array. Uh, very simple. Uh, maybe an array of struct. Uh, you know, struct is a, a data structure which allows you to put together different types. So in this particular case, we have the terms, which in this case are a character, a string of size uh, 20, a character, character array of length 20. <coughs> then you have uh, the frequency that is an integer for eight bytes. And then you have a pointer to the postings. So it could work. Mm, the fact is that uh, when we design our system, our, sorry, our index, we have to keep in mind at least two main uh, um, desiderata. A, how do we store it in, mem in memory efficiently and how we do quickly look up into the terms of the dictionary? Now, if you take a this array of struct without anything outside that will point possibly to, te to, to the terms in the dictionary, uh, which, what is the search time? Assuming that there is nothing outside. You have a dictionary, you want to look up terms in the dictionary. What is the searching time? Let's make the trivial assumption. There, are, there is no order. No, 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 uh, the, the terms are not sorted in this case. It is linear. I have to, to work through the wall entries, right? OK. Uh, which is not good, actually. So the two main alternatives that we can uh, think about uh, in order to implement uh, <coughs> our uh, Inverted index are basically uh, hash tables or trees. Okay. Um, 
There are uh, information retrieval systems that use a stable. There are information retrieval systems that use trees. Both of them are used. So there is no uh, um, winner for all the uh, uh, conditions. Okay? It depends on what, what you, on, on the trade-off we will discuss uh, later on. Okay, just a quick reminder. I'm pretty sure that, uh, and actually we assume that you know what is an hash table, but maybe you don't. So just a very, very quick uh, idea. You have keys. What are those keys in our case? Terms. terms. Excellent. Those terms are mapped through an hash function into uh, identifiers which are then used in order to identify the entries, which, in, which are the pointers to the posting list in our case. OK? OK, what, what is interesting here is that uh, this mapping is made uh, is in, in constant time. OK, so the access is in constant time. OK, so very effective in accessing the data. OK, what is so the uh, pro of the uh, hash table? Uh, the lookup is very fast. It's in constant time, as we saw before, because of this uh, hashing uh, mapping between the key and the index. What are the cons? Uh, there are no easy way to find the variants of the original query. Remind that one of the goal of this lecture is to deal with wildcard. Wildcard means that you have, I don't know, you are looking for uh, cosine and you put cos star. Everything with, that starts with cos and then whatever is there. Uh, there is not an easy way to deal with this kind of queries with hash function, uh, with um, hash table. Okay. Uh, and also, if you have judgment or judgment uh, written in, in, those, in these two ways, basically are completely different terms. Unless what? Unless the previous step that we saw before, so tokenization, lemmization, etc made uh, already the job to put together them in the same term. But if you consider them as distinct terms, which is actually is not the case in mo many, I would say, modern systems, you will not uh, get the same entry through the hash table because there are different keys and thus different entries. Okay? But again, the, previous, the step we saw before will solve this issue. While will not solve the prefix search. Okay, the, what is called the tolerant retrieval. And uh, another problem is that if the vocabulary keep growing because you had new documents with new terms, uh, possibly you have to re, re everything. Because can, can you please remind me what is the idea of hashing? The idea of hashing is every time you give distinct in input, uh, you have distinct output, right? But the fact is that the input uh, can be of arbitrary size, while the output is limited in size. Okay. If the input will grow and the output is uh, small, possibly you have collisions. Namely, two distinct inputs will be mapped into the same output. And again, so two distinct terms, two distinct keys will be mapped into the same uh, ID. It doesn't work. So if by chance your input space will keep growing, 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 it may be you need to re everything with an hash function dealing with hash of bigger size. Okay? And this is extremely expensive. Okay? Good. On the contrary, on the contrary, another option is to use binary trees. Okay, what is the idea of binary tree? Basically, is that you split 
your uh, space, your term space, here you have all the terms, so basically here on the leaves you have all the terms, every time in two places, in two, in two um, sorry, in two uh, groups, okay? One group, in this example, the uh, terms from A to M goes on the left side, the terms from N to Z go on the right side, and so on and forth, and so forth. You iterate this process up to the leaves in which you have the terms in your collection, okay? What is the lookup here? The complexity of the lookup? Log, right? Every time I split, log. Good. Log if you can keep the three what? Balanced. Hmm? If you can keep uh, the three balanced. Because if by chance, considering this particular tree, everything is on the left or right side and keep going, uh, growing on the left or right side. And let, let's make the, 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 I would say, the extreme. You have a chain. It's not anymore log. It's uh, linear, right? Okay? So if you can keep it balanced. Now, in order to make it uh, balanced, actually, what you can use uh, is uh, B-trees, where instead of having simply two, possible uh, children, you have a number of children that is defined by, uh, by this number. In this example, A and B, you have between two and four children at most. This allows you to basically improve in terms of uh, uh, maintaining balance of the tree. Okay? So the B tree is, is a, a data structure which uh, simplifies and make it uh, more efficient, uh, keeping uh, the tree balanced, and so performing uh, logarithmic in terms of lookup. Okay? Keep always in mind is that if by chance your tree is not balanced, and this is the extreme, uh, it's not anymore logarithmic, uh, but is uh, linear. Okay, what about the tree? Okay, the simplest. Uh, uh, form of tree that we can use is the binary tree, but we saw before that we have a problem with binary tree because it could be hard, uh, it could be difficult to maintain uh, uh, a balanced tree. So more often are uh, used the B trees, which allows you to keep the tree balanced and so to perform logarithmic. Um, the tree requires a standard ordering of characters uh, and strings, but come on, usually we have, because up to now we are dealing with uh, terms that are uh, alphanumeric terms. Okay. Maybe you have to introduce an order between uh, symbols that are not standard if you need it in, in specific contexts, but the alphabet and the number have an implicit alphanumeric ordering, so we don't have problem about that. It definitely solves the prefix problem. Why it solves it? Uh, because it's uh, the label that you have uh, on the edges are exactly uh, the, uh, the label of the prefix. Okay? What is the cons? It is log m, not only. It's true that B3 allows you to more effectively maintain a balanced tree. But anyway, sometimes you have to, to perform an operation in order to rebalance the tree. Okay? Otherwise, you don't get the log M. Okay, so rebalancing binary tree is extremely uh, expensive. Uh, B3 mitigates this problem. Okay, so again, if you want Question, you have a relatively stable collection and uh, your system must be designed in order to, um, to optimize the query time. Would you use hash table or tree? Hash table, if you have a relatively 
relatively stable dictionary. It means that uh, to some extent you know in advance uh, what are the terms in your uh, dictionary since you want to optimize the query uh, answering time, uh, what you can use uh, exploiting the custom time to access an entry are hash table. While on the other case, you have a very dynamic uh, data collection in which terms are uh, very dynamic, uh, maybe uh, using uh, and, and, and keep growing uh, over time. Maybe you should consider using uh, trees rather than hash table, okay? Roughly. Clearly, you can have uh, any kind uh, of solution in the middle between the two, and uh, it's up to you to design the best, uh, to, to employ the best data structure depending on your needs. Okay, wildcard queries. What is wildcard queries? Are queries in the form of moon star, hmm? namely, start uh, finding all the documents that uh, uh, start with moon and uh, ending with any kind of uh, postfix, okay? Okay, with binary tree or B3, it's very simple. Uh, you have uh, to retrieve all the uh, words that are in the range moon and moo. So basically, if you go here, you move towards the tree and uh, you are selecting a subtree containing all your entries, okay? So, very simple for moon star, but uh, what, happen? what happens when we consider star moon? Namely, every, something starting with everything you want and ending with moon. Uh, can we employ the same uh, binary tree? No. No. Ideas? Mm -hmm. We have a replica of the binary tree which works in the opposite way. Excellent. So the idea is to have, a, say, another binary tree in which basically the indexing is made on the other side. Okay. So. <clears throat> So in this example, uh, the term uh, lemon should be indexed at, as a root normal on, on, on the opposite side, right? Uh, and so if we do a walk down in the reverse uh, uh, B3 and we get all the answers, so basically we, we have uh, all the references uh, to the postings uh, containing uh, those terms. Okay, good. And uh, can we use both these binary trees in order to answer to more complex queries like, uh, I don't know, x star y? What can we do? Basically, we compose, right, the two operations we saw before. We make x star first. We keep the results. On that results, we, app we apply star y. And then we make the intersection. OK? OK. That's the idea. So basically, if we want to answer to, to query like pro star cent, what uh, we, we, we can do is uh, we first compute the set uh, pro star, then we compute uh, the star cent, and then we make the intersection. Okay. Can we do it easily? Yes, because basically it's the merging operation we saw several times uh, with our indexes. Okay, this will be the index uh, of the answering to this question. This will be the index, sorry, the passing list answering to this question, to this query, 
the passing list uh, answering to this query, and then we can merge it uh, as usually. Okay. Good. Um, uh, keep in mind that uh, anyway, now we have an enumeration of um, all the terms answering to the given query, but then we have to do the lookup, right? To get uh, the posting list, uh, namely the, the documents ID that actually matching the, this term. This allows us only to get the terms. Is it clear? When I write pro star, I only select all the terms that say that are compliant with pro star. Okay. But then, once I have those terms, I have to get all the documents, and maybe I have to get all the documents uh, making uh, answering to queries like uh, c star eight and uh, file star r. Okay. Okay, good, we have a solution. Hmm? Uh, this solution is quite expensive. We need uh, both uh, the binary uh, trees, uh, one, uh, the, I, I would say the direct binary tree, moon, star, another is the backward uh, binary tree, star, moon, and then we have to put together this stuff and to merge them in order to find all the terms uh, and the possibly uh, answering to the, to, the, to, the, to the query, pro start send. Do we have any alternatives? And this is actually what we will discuss uh, in the next uh, slides and uh, gives rise to the permutherm uh, index. Okay, the permutherm uh, index uh, uh, basically it works uh, as follows. We introduce a special character, the dollar in this case, which uh, uh, identifies the end of a given term. Okay. So <coughs> what we do next, for each term, term, we will compute all the possible permutation. Okay. So let's see this example, hello dollar, uh, hello dollar h, and so on and so forth. All the, and notice that uh, all those permutations will point to the same term. Then the rules we will apply is the following. When we will look for x, actually we will look up for, for x dollar. When we will look for x star, actually we will look up for dollar x star. Those are the two cases we saw before. When we will look for star x, we will we'll actually look up on x dollar star. And this is, again, star x star, we will look up for x star. And this is what we uh, the kind of query we answered with the techniques we saw before, with the two binary three, we will actually look up for y dollar x star. Why? Because you have always to remember that here you have a dollar, and what you do is you make a permutation up to when the star reaches the end. Okay? Good. So let's see when we want to answer to the query sorry m star n this is not not m star n clear is m star n <coughs> so what we do is uh, we do the permutation in order to bring the asterisk to the end of our query and so we start from m star n, the original query with the end symbol. The first permutation, we rotate it. We rotate it up to reach the star at the end. 
Okay. Now, in this example, what you do is you do the same for the other for uh, all the terms, right? Because in this example, you are building this data structure for all the terms. But now, you know how to answer to these, because it's basically the binary tree we saw before. But we don't need the backward one. We only need the forward one. OK. Is this clear? We introduce a new term, the dollar. It OK. Let's take uh, all the elements, the terms, in our dictionary. Let's assume that the term we are considering is a law. Let's introduce a new symbol, the dollar, which is the ending symbol. OK? It's a new symbol. We introduce it. And let's map a law to all the permutation of a law uh, with the, this new symbol. Let's see it here. OK, the term in the dictionary is a law. OK, this is in the dictionary. OK, <clears throat> what we do is we consider a law with a new symbol. And then we make all the permutation of this. OK, so it will be star hello o star l l o star <coughs> and so on and so forth okay and we map all this to our original term we are simply building uh, the tree okay okay now we apply those queries. Let's see first the example, and then we go back to the queries. Okay? Let's consider this example. We want to the query now is M star N. Okay. We will transform this query into M star N with the new symbol. We will apply the rotation up to when the star will be at the end. Okay, so let's make the first rotation. The second one. OK, now it is at the end. And now we apply the same stuff, and we consider do these two examples. So if you have man dollars, first rotation dollar man, second rotation n dollar m, and so on and so forth. Now, if you use these, as the query we saw before, with a B3 that is built on this, okay, instead of the original term, you see that there is a matching, right? Because basically you are looking for N, dollar, M, everything. So A, a is everything. Or you're looking for N star M, Oro, in the, ca in the case of Moron. So this simple trick, of rotating uh, will allow you to consider only one of the solution we saw before with the B3, instead of uh, having also the backward index. 
You don't need anymore the backward index because you make uh, this rotation trick. Okay. So, so it's a rotation, but not a permutation. It's a rotation, but not a permutation. It, it still have some orders. Ah, yes, yes, sorry. Okay, you make this rotation of the terms. Okay. So what is the problem here? Is that uh, actually the size of your index is growing fast. Empirically, you can observe that for English, uh, you are uh, four times your uh, lexicon size. But at the same time, time allows you to answer to query without uh, the difficulties uh, and the, uh, um, the problems we saw before using both the forward and the backward uh, B3. Okay? That, that's why you can use this. Now, let's make an exercise. What can you do if you, if you have to answer to this query? X star Y star Z. Let's think about it a bit. How can I represent this? Is this a superset of that? Okay. Why? Because this star contains also the solution given by star y star. Correct? So I can answer to this one, x star z. As before. So x star z, I introduce the usual term um, dollar. I'll bring uh, through permutation the dollar at the end. And uh, I performs, uh, perform the operation as before. Now, the fact is that <coughs> the solution that I will get, uh, not all the solution have uh, y in the middle, right? Because that star uh, contains everything. So what I have to do then, I have to scan all the solution, so the exhaustive, exhaustive uh, search, uh, in order to find out, find out all the solution that actually match the original query with the y in the middle. OK. Does it make sense to everybody? Good. Questions? OK, uh, another uh, possibility is to enumerate all the k grams. OK? In this case, we have the sentence, uh, April uh, is the cruelest month. Uh, and uh, if we enumerate all the two grams, again, uh, we introduce the symbol uh, dollar, and so we have those are all the possible uh, 
B grams or K grams in general. In this particular case, we will focus on B grams. Okay? And we introduce this dollar that in this case is a special uh, 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 word uh, boundary symbol. Good. What, what you can do is you can maintain uh, a second uh, invertent index uh, that uh, from uh, B grams go to the dictionary terms. So as an example, this B grams will represent all the word, all the um, terms uh, starting with M. Okay? This B gram will represent all the terms having M O. This big gram will represent all the terms having O N and so on and so forth. Okay, we, we have to maintain uh, <coughs> this big gram. Okay, good. Now, how can we process again moon star? We can simply run an end of the big grams in which moon star is star M and M O and O N. If we run this uh, Boolean query, and we know how to run it, okay, is, this is the example we saw in the first class, okay, we can get all <coughs> the terms uh, that are uh, in our wildcard uh, query. Actually, we are enumerating even more. Because in this example, if we have moon star, moon should not be part of our solution. OK. But uh, actually, uh, it is. So what you have to do is, you have, is that you have to post filter. So you have to remove all the solution that are uh, not consistent with your query. OK. OK, so um, the main advantage, uh, clearly, what you do then, the ones that survive to the post filter uh, are then uh, looked up in the term document inverted index in order to get the documents that actually answer to your query. It is fast. Uh, it is uh, space uh, is efficient if compared uh, to Permoterm. So it works pretty well. Good. Now, in general, the point is the following. If you allow people to uh, use wildcard, wild people will possibly use it because it's a convenient way to, to make uh, general queries, right? Um, and the fact is that uh, uh, you, even if you can answer to those queries uh, in efficient ways, as we saw, anyway, the, you are stressing your system. So basically, most of the systems uh, are designed in order to allow those kind of query only to advanced users. Namely, the use of wildcard is not, uh, to some extent, sponsorized. You have to use it uh, uh, either because you know it or because you use the so-called advanced uh, search features. But this is a choice of the designer of the system in order to do not stress the system. OK. Good. Uh, first of all, I just would like to clarify the last argument, because from some question you made, maybe I was not clear. OK. okay. How to answer to wildcard wild like moon star should be now clear, right? Because basically, I explore the B3 from the root to uh, the leaf, and then M, O, N, everything in this tree is part of our answer, OK, of our result set. Is this clear to everybody? Good. As an example, if uh, Moon star is mono, M O N D O will be here. If it would be monolithic, it would be M N O O lithic somewhere here. 
this is all the tree. Good. But this does not now, uh, uh, sorry, this does, the, this does not allow us to answer to query like star moon. Okay, so the first answer we discussed is the following. Instead of star moon, let's build a reverse a backward tree, which basically does the following. It reverses it, it and it indexes num star. Okay, so notice that now the tree is not uh, read from the root to the leaves, but from the leaves to the root in order to build the original term. But that, this does not change the, the, the whole meaning of, uh, of the data structure. <coughs> now, we can apply similar to, to what we did before, a technique in order to find out all the answers uh, to star moon, right? Does it make sense to everybody? Simply exploring N, O, M, and O, and then all the subtree, it's, make, uh, it's part of our answer. Is this clear? Good. Now, if I want to answer something like, uh, oops, x, oops, x star y, okay, I can use first this one, x star, y star, and then merge the two answer. So next, the question is, can we use something that does not require this, this part, and answer to this kind of queries? And this is why we introduced the <coughs> dollar symbol. We made the rotation, and basically, thanks to the rotation, to this, the introduction of this symbol, that notice that is not made only for the query. It must be done for all the terms uh, in your dictionary, right? So you need something like this. Oops. Sorry. You need something like this in your dictionary. Like this part. In order to perform this, this query. But now, to solve, to query like this, with the introduction of this new symbol, we can exploit the B3 as we know before. We don't need any more the backward one. OK? So, so the tree structure it, it remains the same? It remains the same with the introduction of the dollar symbol that you have to consider. Hmm? For? Yes. Does it make sense? Indeed. The argument that we discussed is that empirically, you have uh, four times the space, you need four times the space that you, need, uh, you needed before. OK, but this is one, one, one of the options. OK, the other option we discussed. is by B grams or K grams or whatever, in which basically now the answer, in order to solve our uh, uh, wildcard, is a usual Boolean query. But observe that in this case, you have a superset of the queries that actually answer to your original query. So you have to do some post filter processing in order to remove all the elements. In both cases, what you get is a list of terms that are consistent with what? With your original wildcard query. From those terms that are consistent with your original wildcard queries, now you have to perform the last step. You have to get back the posting list, namely the documents containing those terms. OK. Good. So, <coughs> spelling correction. Hmm? Now, let's recap up to now what happened. Up to now, in, in this, say, second uh, uh, set of uh, slides, so we saw A, 
what are the most convenient ways to build your inverted index. And we discussed that we have two options, hash tables and uh, <coughs> B3s. Okay. B, we saw how to deal with wild card. Hmm? And so we saw all the options we have, per moon index, uh, B grams, uh, stuff like that. Now, we have to deal with uh, spell correction. We have basically two main cases, two principal, principal uses. One is that you want possibly to correct the doc document uh, that uh, uh, have been uh, indexed, or uh, will be actually indexed. Or another approach is that you want to correct the queries that the user is giving to the system. I guess you experience every day when you write down something to Google and uh, it writes, uh, did you mean, uh, maybe did you mean, and actually it's always right. <laughs> it's a bit embarrassing, but it's always right, okay? Good. So those are the two main uh, approaches. And you have basically two, the two main use cases, and you have basically two main approaches to deal with those two use cases. One is uh, you can work on uh, isolated word. Uh, so basically you can check whether each word has been misspelled. Hmm? Um, as an example from maybe is form. But unfortunately in this case, if you don't have any glue about the context in which your, uh, your um, word is, maybe you cannot solve this issue. So this brings to <coughs> context sensitive flavor, which uh, takes into consideration the context in which the word is embedded, okay, is used. Okay, the document correction, I remind you the two main use cases, either correct the document that will be indexed or correct the query that the user is giving to the system. Uh, the document correction is especially needed in uh, doc OCR documents. What are the OCR documents? Are those documents that have been automatically recognized, the uh, optical uh, character recognition, I think it, uh, OCR is. So you give a printed document and you give back, uh, you get back a digital content. <coughs> okay. Uh, those correction uh, algorithm actually needs uh, to know uh, a possible problem are, as an example, that uh, RN, the two letters RN, looks quite similar to an M. So maybe the OCR system will erroneously uh, translate RN into M. Or you have to know some uh, domain specific knowledge. We will see later a picture in which basically you can think about uh, the fact that uh, uh, using a keyboard implies that the not all errors in typing are, have the same probability, clearly. Because it's more likely that if you want to, uh, in, in this example, if you, want to put a, if you want to write an N, it's more likely that you press an M rather than a Q, simply because the N and M are quite close while the Q is pretty distant. Okay, <clears throat> so the goal is that uh, to have a dictionary in our <coughs> index that contains uh, fewer misspelling. Um, what, what, what can we do? Suppose that there is this uh, query in which uh, in, uh, uh, the query is uh, Alanis Morissette in which uh, the surname has not been correctly typed. Uh, either you correct the query and thus instead of Morizet without the E and the double S uh, you consider uh, the right one so you correct it autonomously or you can uh, suggest several uh, alternatives did you mean uh, which is actually the example that uh, you uh, often experience maybe that uh, uh, those corrections that are suggested are based on the feedback provided by users that uh, made uh, a similar or the same query before of you. 
okay, in order to build statistics on which are, what are the most uh, likely errors. Okay, the basic idea is that uh, for, for uh, isolated work correction is that, it, is that there, there exists a correct lexicon. Uh, most likely you have uh, an English dictionary, but consider that in uh, some specific information retrieval system you might have industry-specific lexicon, okay? Or you might have a lexicon specific for the um, uh, corpus that you are considering. As an example, all the words on the web, uh, acronyms, and so on and so forth. But the idea is that there exists something that uh, tells you what should be your uh, correct term. Now, Knowing uh, what, the, what are the possible correct terms, uh, the idea is that uh, basically you keep into the lexicon, namely into the set of correct terms, uh, the term that is closest to the misspelled one. Pretty natural, right? Uh, what do we mean by closest? Uh, now, there are a number of possible uh, alternatives. We will quickly explore all of these alternatives. So the one is the added distance, the distance between the two uh, terms, uh, applying some changes. Did you do Hamming distance somewhere? OK, anyway, something similar to the Hamming distance. Uh, weighted added distance that takes into consideration that not all misspellings or errors are uh, at the same uh, likelihood or uh, n-gram overlap, we will see. OK. So what is the added distance? Given two, two strings, S1 and S2, the idea is uh, that the added distance is the minimum amount uh, of operators, which are usually insert, delete, uh, or replace at character level that you have to apply in order to transform S1 into S2, OK? So let's see this example. If you, here you have cat and act, OK? If you have transpose as a possible operator, the distance is simply 1, because from cat you are switching A with C. If you don't have transpose, you have the usual insert, delete, or replace, you have to replace the C with the A and the A with the C. OK, so depending on the kind of operators that you, you support, uh, the distance is either 2 or 1. Hmm? And usually, you can easily imagine how you can implement this with dynamic programming, right? Because basically, you apply the changes uh, in this. As usually, in dynamic programming, you have in mind uh, this table. For each operation, you see how the weight of the table evolve uh, in order to transform one, <coughs> one, uh, uh, one sentence into the other. Uh, now, this, anyway, assume that um, all the possible uh, operators uh, will happen with the same likelihood, uh, which is not actually the case. Again, let's consider this, uh, this simple uh, keyboard. It's very likely that you push N instead of M, while it's very unlikely that you push Q instead of M. Mm -hmm. So in, in principle, in order to improve the performance of the system, you should uh, use a weighted uh, distance. Mm -hmm. The idea of the weighted distance is that you have a uh, uh, probabilistic model, which allows you to define weights uh, uh, according to the probability that actually a given uh, transformation or the application of a given operator happen. Okay. Now, uh, how can you use edit uh, distance? Given a query. You, what, what, what you can do is that you can 
rank all the possible suggestions for the user according to an increasing uh, uh, distance from a correct term. The idea again here is very <coughs> straightforward, is that uh, is uh, most likely to have uh, one single error rather than 10 errors, 10 misspelling or bugs uh, in, when you write. So first of all, you suggest the minimum distance from the correct word, and then you possibly continue to propose other possible uh, solution. Hmm? Now, um, the two options are the following. Either while you are writing, uh, it appears a kind of menu with all the possible suggestions, and you select the ones that you consider most uh, appropriate, which actually is consistent with the error you are making, which is this solution. Or you can look up all, all possible correction. The fact is that usually this is very, very slow. In general, the alternative uh, disempower user, the, the idea is that uh, the involvement of the user is less, I would say, um, evident than in other cases, but uh, uh, save a round of interaction with, with it, okay? With him, or her. Okay. Do we have alternative? Because basically, this idea is reasonable, makes sense, but if you want to compute the distance between the terms that we are in our query to all the possible terms, it can be uh, time consuming, it can be slow and expensive. How can we select uh, in, a most in the most effective way uh, a subset of the possible solution that allow us to improve the performance of the system? Uh, one possibility is to use again the n-gram. We saw the keygram uh, before uh, in order to answer to wildcard queries. Do you remember, right? As, in, uh, as an example, moon in the two grams is dollar m and dollar <coughs> m o and dollar and o n. Okay. In this case, we can use n-gram uh, uh, in order to improve. Uh, uh, the performance of the spelling correction. So the idea is the following. You enumerate uh, all, the n -gram, uh, all the n grams in the query string and uh, all the n grams in the lexicon. Um, and then uh, you use the n gram index. Remind that uh, the idea in the wildcard we saw before in order to uh, get all the terms, the lexicon terms, matching any of the query in the n-grams. Now, the fact is that you need to define a threshold. How can I identify a subset of documents that are actually relevant? Hmm? So, we need to solve this threshold uh, problem, and one possibility is to use the Jacquard coefficient. But first of all, let's see an example. Assume that uh, the text is uh, November and the three grams are this one, while uh, December the three grams are those one. And so we have uh, these uh, um, uh, three, three grams overlaps over six. But uh, how can we measure what are the performance of our system? And as I told you before, one solution is the Jacquard coefficient. The standard definition of Jacquard coefficient is uh, given two sets, and those are the two sets of the three grams uh, of the terms. So basically, are this set and that set. In order to see how much they are close, we can compute the intersection over the union. Okay? Let's see what happened. The Jacquard coefficient is equal to 1 when the two set of 3 grams in this particular case are exactly the same. Okay? So, same stuff. 
the Jacquard coefficient is equal <coughs> um, to uh, zero when there are, there are basically the intersection is uh, zero, and then you have number between zero and one representing uh, uh, how much the two the, the two uh, sets are uh, similar one to the other. Through the Jacquard coefficient, you can establish a ranking among uh, the possible terms, <coughs> because given uh, the original term, you will uh, give as answer the ones that have the highest Jacquard coefficient, the Jacquard coefficient closest to one, and thus you can apply this simple method. So basically, if you have Lord, the query Lord, you, you define as a threshold uh, words uh, matching two of its three bigrams. And so it works as follow. OK. And so you see that basically you can select the original terms that match to at least two of the bigrams. In this particular case, you have board and lower. Okay? And anyway, with the Jacquard coefficient, you can assign a ranking between the possible solution and select the ones that are only above a given threshold. In this particular case, it's two over three. Okay. This idea of distance, that is either uh, the distance uh, in terms of number of operations that I have to apply in order to get from uh, one sentence to the other sentence, or a distance measuring the similarity between two sets, namely the Jacquard coefficient, is behind the first class of uh, solutions that uh, do not consider uh, the context of the phrase, right? The next uh, set of solution consider the context uh, are context uh, sensitive. And uh, so <clears throat> as an example, uh, uh, you get this text. Uh, I flew from Itru to Narita. And uh, given uh, the, uh, the phrase uh, flew from Itro, we'd like to respond, uh, did you mean uh, flee, flew from instead of form Itru? Because clearly this is pretty natural, right? Considering the context. You flew from one place to another place. OK, even because you don't have otherwise documents matching this query. So what, I, what the two possible strategies, either you adapt the query to your documents, or you adapt the documents to your query. OK, good. OK, um, clearly this can be obtained uh, uh, observing the, the context in which this query has been uh, submitted. The, main, the first idea is uh, <coughs> to retrieve terms that are uh, close in terms of distance or weighted distance to each query term, term and then ask basically uh, feedback to the user as an example. Okay? So, yeah, you have the different uh, alternative. You keep all the terms except one, and you see what is the distance. And then you ask suggestion to, uh, you suggest alternative to the user, and you get feedback in order to select the ones that uh, is more suitable, is, is more appropriate for the user. OK. Um, okay, in general, we can see 
this kind of uh, uh, correction uh, again as a uh, probabilistic uh, uh, as part of a probabilistic model in which uh, what you want to do is you want to maximize the probability of a given correspondence of a correspondence given a query and you can transform uh, thanks to bias this to the probability of a query given a correspondence multiplied by the probability of the correspondence okay if you know the context uh, clearly you can build uh, this statistical model and can be applied in order to select the most appropriate uh, suggestion to the user I just would like to mention but really very quickly Soundex um, okay the idea of Soundex basically is that you can use phonetics uh, phonetic uh, in order of uh, uh, transform a query into its phonetic uh, equivalent like uh, Chebyshev into this form uh, of Chebyshev okay and this can uh, help uh, in some cases uh, yeah I'll show you just a very typical algorithm for Soundex what it does is the following uh, the idea is that uh, uh, um, wall in particular A, I, E, O and U does not contribute to the sound uh, as much as these uh, letters that are at the end okay and then there is also an idea that if L is before M so if you have consecutive numbers those are not very relevant in order to map uh, the sound uh, of a given word. Th those are the idea behind. Okay. Mm -hmm. At the end, uh, thus you apply this algorithm uh, in which basically you remove all pair of consecutive digits because basically they do not contribute too much to the sound. By consecutive digit is means that uh, if you have LM, you have mapped it into four five, and thus you remove it. Okay, you remove all zeros for the same uh, argument because the idea is that uh, all those letters uh, will not contribute too much to the sound uh, of the word. And then what you do is you use some uh, padding. So as an example, Herman is mapped into H655. Okay, and so this allows you to have some tool in order to deal with uh, uh, the phonetic uh, uh, of given uh, words okay nobody let, let me be very clear nobody will possibly uh, ask you um, such kind of details about Sandex and stuff like that okay this is not the important part but why we are showing you this kind of uh, uh, details because it gives you an idea of the complexity hmm? so you have to always consider that uh, between the simple program we saw before in which in LTK we made an inverted index uh, immediately with uh, very few lines of code uh, and the system working in a real environment with all this complexity there is a huge gap and those details make the difference okay so nobody again uh, will be uh, so picky to ask you all the details of the codex algorithm but uh, please keep in mind that uh, those complexities uh, makes the difference between a real world system and the toy okay we build the toy in uh, five lines of code unfortunately as soon as you move that coin into the real world it doesn't work that, that that's the message while <coughs> respect to what we said before we have some concepts that are important. I just want, would like to recap very quickly. We have several phases that we have to pass in order to get from the original collection of documents an inverted index. We have tokenization, we, uh, we have uh, stop words, we have lemma, etc. Okay? 
Once we have that, the next question is, OK, we now know how to build the inverted index. Can we improve the performance of the inverted index? First answer, yes, we can, as an example, using uh, jumps into the inverted index. B, OK, now that we know that we can improve the inverted index, what, what is the most suitable data structure? And we discussed hash table and trees. Good. Now that we know the, what is the most suitable data structure, some more details. In particular, the most relevant one is how to deal with wildcards. Okay? And so we saw how to deal with wildcards with the B index, uh, with the forward and backward, uh, sorry, B index, B3, with the forward and backward B3, and how to use uh, uh, K grams uh, in order to provide the alternative solution. Okay, this is, should recap the main ideas we deliver you today. Questions? Okay.